Let's say that you're trying to overclock your 9900K to 5 gigahertz, but you've hit a thermal roadblock. Now, aside from the fairly trivial solutions like upgrading your CPU cooler, increasing your fan speed, or improving your case's airflow, there is one thing that we haven't covered yet, and that is direct die cooling. Specifically, what this means is that you're going to be removing the heat spreader from your CPU and then mounting your CPU cooler directly to your CPU die. Now, there are some risks involved here. You could potentially kill your CPU, but if the thermal drops are large enough, this actually might be worth it for some of you. So I'll first state that although the 9900K is a relatively hot eight core CPU, if you're just going to be leaving it bone stock in the BIOS, this isn't something that you need to consider unless you are currently limited by your CPU cooler. The 9900K can be cooled comfortably with a 240 mil AIO, granted that your motherboard isn't setting unreasonable voltages. This mod is more relevant to those who are going to be pushing their 9900K to five gigahertz and beyond. And since that requires higher CPU voltage, the inherent trade-off there is of course increased CPU thermals. For example, pushing a 9900K to 5 gigahertz will require around 1.35 volts for an average grade chip, and even with a 240 mil AIO mounted on an open test bench with a room ambient of just 20 degrees C, we're seeing the 9900K average over 86 degrees C with a peak temp of 93 C. With the launch of the 9900KS, the all-core 5 gigahertz version of the 9900K, this this video is even more so relevant for that processor. Now, for those who don't know, 9th gen CPUs from Intel are using the soldered thermal interface material. So it's a lot more efficient and effective at transmitting heat compared to the 8th gen processors, which were using a bit of a dried up sort of toothpaste material as people were calling it. Still though, we should be able to decrease thermals a little bit further. Also, I will know that this is my 9900K that I use in my editing and gaming PC, and I did pay full price for it. So the risk here is relatively high. Firstly, let's see what the difference is just by deleting and replacing the solder thermal interface material with liquid metal. The tool that I'm going to be using here is Dobauer's D-Lid Dimate 2, a really sturdy clamp tool which uses sheer force to safely remove the CPU's heat spreader. I will leave a link down below to this one in the description. It is highly recommended. So it's pretty simple. Just place the CPU into the slot with the correct orientation, slide over and screw in the top portion, and then begin screwing it in. Now, since Intel's ninth Gen processors are soldered, I recommend doing a couple of passes here just to completely shear off the heat spreader in both directions. So keep screwing it in until you see the heat spreader loosen up, then rotate the CPU 180 degrees, and then do the same thing until the heat spreader provides almost no resistance. Then pull the heat spreader off, and now it's time to clean things up because things are pretty messy underneath. Although this is a solder thermal interface, it is pretty soft and can be carved off carefully with a razor. Keyword there being carefully. You definitely want to avoid any deep scratches to the die on the CPU. It shouldn't take that much force to remove the solder tim. Next, you'll want to remove all of the black adhesive that holds the CPU heat spreader in place. You definitely won't need a razor for this. A hard plastic spatula is more than enough to remove all of it. The one that I'm using here was borrowed from my iFixit screwdriver kit, but if you don't have one of those, you should be able to find a similar tool from a supermarket or from Amazon. If you're just planning on de-litting, you'll also want to clean up the bottom of the IHS using the same steps. Now, before we go straight to mounting the CPU cooler directly to the CPU die, let's first see whether plain old de-litting and replacing with liquid metal actually makes a difference. The liquid metal that I'm using here is Thermal Grizzly Conductor Nort. I'll also link this one down below because it is highly recommended. Most of you guys have seen the application of this before. It's just really conservative amounts and then take your time spreading it out over an even layer. Also, the 9900K has a couple of exposed pads very close to the die that you want to avoid shorting, and you'll want to protect this from any potential liquid metal spills. I used electrical tape here, which surprisingly sticks to the PCB quite well, but you can also use nail polish, silicone glue, or even thermal paste if you have nothing else on hand. Now, usually this is the part where we'd glue the heat spreader back on, but seeing as we're just going to test direct die thermals right after, there really is no point to that. 
And looking at the thermals now, deleting a 9900K just to replace the solder thermal interface material with liquid metal is kind of pointless. Even with the 9900K pulling huge amounts of power at five gigahertz, we're only seeing a drop of about four degrees C on average. Safe to say that's not worth the time and risk involved. Peak thermals dropped from 93 degrees C to a slightly more tame 88 C, but again, it's nothing massive. Direct die cooling is what really intrigues me though, seeing as this effectively removes two layers from the equation, the CPU heat spreader, but also the thermal paste between the heat spreader and the CPU cooler. Now, a really important note, since you are removing around three millimeters of height from your CPU, this means that your cooler will now need to be mounted three millimeters lower. So for the Kraken X52 that I'm using for testing, that meant that I had to swap out the original screws for M3 by 25 millimeter screws. So just keep that in mind, most air cool that I know of, for example, can't be mounted at three millimeters lower just by improvising the screw length, but most AIOs shouldn't really have a problem. For direct die cooling, I'd also highly recommend a Bauer's OC frame. Essentially, this just locks the CPU into the motherboard socket without the need for the retention bracket. It is possible to mount the cooler directly to the die without using a frame or plate to hold the CPU in place, though. That's what I did for testing, but I will note that this is extremely sketchy and I don't really recommend it. If you're also also using an improvised screw length, you want to be really careful not to mount the cooler with too much force. Just enough to get a firm contact on the CPU die is enough, any more and you could risk cracking the die which is relatively delicate compared to the heat spreader. So booting up Blender to peg all cores at 5 GHz and thermals are looking significantly better. On average, there's a 13.2 degree C drop from stock and a 9.3 degree drop compared to the deleted thermals. That is a lot more than I was personally expecting. At this point, you're able to safely push workloads at five gigahertz on a 240 mil liquid AIO, where previously that was peaking at around 90 degrees C. And speaking of peak thermals, they saw an even larger drop of 16 degrees C from stock and 11 degrees C when compared to the D-lid. So it's safe to say that if your 9900K is thermally restrained, whether that's due to running a limited CPU cooler or pushing your overclocks to five gigahertz and beyond, direct die cooling is actually extremely effective in reducing the thermals. Especially for those uh, working with small form factor cases, I can see this being super effective. But that's if you know what you're doing when it comes to PC hardware. You do need to be really careful when delidding. Carving off the solder interface could end up as a disaster, and liquid metal, remember, is electrically conductive. Having said that, a 16 degree C drop from stock is absolutely enormous, and that's definitely one of the bigger results that I've seen from direct die cooling on a 9900K. That uh, is part in due to doing the testing with at five gigahertz at 1.35 volts. If you're just running your CPU at 1.2 volts, for example, you're not going to see as much of a drop there because you're not pushing as much power. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So of course, if you are interested in doing this, I will leave links to all of the tools that you'll need down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.